Today we're going to talk about how to create a title block for layouts and how to create it in model space, move it to layout, uh, into the layout environment, and how to do an 8.5 by 11 and 11 by 17 title block, how to create them as a template, and then bring it into an existing drawing that you've created. Back in the early days of AutoCAD, what uh, in not so early days, a lot of companies would create drawings in the model space and then they'd bring in a title block as a block and then scale it up to fit the drawing and then print it to a scale to make it fit uh, on their paper. Well, with the layout tools that are now available, you don't have to go through that level of hassle anymore. So what we're going to do today is create a title block and you can customize it any way that you'd like and then we're going to show you how to put, bring it into the layout space and then move it to an existing drawing that you've already created. So to begin we'll start with the home tab and uh, we'll choose rectangles and we'll create a rectangle and when we draw a rectangle the key is, is that we want to right mouse click and choose distance excuse me dimensions and our dimension is going to be 11 on the X and 8.5 on the Y and we'll get an 8.5 by 11. Now you can notice that it's not 100% finished yet until we left mouse click and anchor it onto the screen. That's an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. So we know that our title block must fit inside that 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. So I'm going to go ahead and use the offset tool and type in 0 .30 and offset all the sides of the rectangle by 0.3. Now what I found is that somewhere between 0.25 and 0.375 somewhere in that vicinity is where you need to be. We could have went uh, 0.3250. The idea is that you want it to make it slightly smaller than the paper because you know that your printer can't print all the way out to the edges of the paper. Now that we have an inside rectangle, I need to explode it and then break it back into individual lines that I can use to edit and uh, work with. So the explode command found again on the home under modify takes the existing rectangle as a solid object which it is currently notice that it highlights all four sides of the rectangle and I select it, right mouse click, and now you can notice that it only highlights one line at a time, so I actually exploded it back into the individual lines. We'll use the offset command again to start to build the title block. I'm going to offset the bottom line 1.0 inches up, and then I'll offset that line 0.375 or about 3 eighths of an inch down twice and that'll leave about a quarter inch at the very bottom if we have any other details. In addition to that I'm going to draw a vertical line from the midpoint and that was an object snap setting and it stays set. I'm going to create a vertical line from the midpoint to the midpoint on my title block sheet. So now I've got it split into two equal halves. I'll then offset that vertical line 3.0 inches to both the right and the left hand side to actually create the fields for the title block. Now that I've got fields that I can work with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim and when you use the trim command you want to select the cutting surface first, right mouse click and then trim the lines back to that cutting edge. So this area could be used for grading, it could be used as a logo spot for your company or for your class. The rest of the, the fields will put text in as a placeholder, which you can always click and edit and put the value in. So we're going to choose multi-line text. With the multi-line text, I'm going to create a window and it's going to be the full size of the box. And the text height is 0.20 that'll work pretty well. 0.1875 is usually about 3 16 of an inch is about the standard that's used. Um, we can update that to 0 0.1875 1875 and that'll make the text slightly smaller and we'll call this particular field 
drawing name. You know, typically everything's in capitals, so you want to have your caps lock on. For your text name. Now, I also want to center it in the field. It could be left justified if we choose to. If we want to make it all left justified text, that's very appropriate. We can also make it all centered text. Again, your company will predicate how the text will be edited. When I left mouse click, or now I chose close the text window, and you can see that the text isn't fitting square, squarely in the field. So what I'm going to do is take and move the grip point up here in the upper left hand corner down just a little bit straight down to pretty much center that text. Again, if we wanted to we could take the difference and we can move it to a set distance. Um, I'll then take the drawing name, hit the escape key to get out of the grips, and now I can take and copy this particular text to the other four fields. Don't worry that it doesn't have the right value in it. So I'm going to use the copy command, selected the object, which was the text, right mouse click, and then I'll select my base point, and my second points are going to be at the top corners of all four of the boxes. And if you really wanted to, you could even put it out here at this box. We'll manipulate that one here in just a couple minutes. It's a little too big, but we'll fix it. So all I did now was copy, and notice that it's all centered because all four of these boxes are exactly the same size. So drawing name will be here. Your name will be here. And all I'm doing is double clicking on the text it gets into edit mode. So used to capitalizing. Section and class name. And then drawing number. In the field to the right, which doesn't fit, I'm going to go ahead and grip it. And I'm going to grip the arrow because that arrow indicates the column width. And I'm going to shrink the column width back to the field of the space. Now it's slightly smaller than the rest. But in this field, instead of drawing name, we're going to go ahead and put the date. And then we're going to copy this, so I'll choose copy, select date, right mouse click, base point at the top corner, second point at the next corner. And hit the escape key to stop. And this one will be scale. So now we've got pretty much all of our text preloaded. So I can just click on it and edit it to make that change. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and save my work. It's going to be called Title Block Creation. And we'll hit Save. Do I want it to exist? Yep, I'll replace it. When I come to the Layout 1, because now we're finished drawing our title block. And when I come to Layout 1, I can see in my title block, but it's not the right size and, and so forth because it's inside that viewport. If you remember, there's a viewport that shows you the model environment and you can tell because you can see the grid. We're going to delete that viewport. Why? Because we want to bring the title block in first and then create the viewport inside the title block. So now that I've deleted the viewport, and I do that first so you don't get confused, we'll go back to the Model tab, and we're going to copy this. So I'm going to go ahead and create a blue, blue box all the way around the object. That's a selection window. I just came up here and picked no commands, 
just came up and selected left mouse click and then a left mouse click and now everything is gripped I right mouse click after I see all the grips and we're going to choose clipboard copy with base point it's this is the Windows co cut copy and paste commands so it gives us the ability to do basic window operations and so the base point is going to be in the lower left hand corner and I'll pick it and congratulations it's now copied it says copy base found 17 objects I'll go to the layout right mouse click clipboard paste so notice that I've got dotted lines but I know but remember that the sheet size that I'm working with here is eight and a half by eleven my outer line is exactly eight and a half by eleven so I'm gonna go ahead and try to line it up as close to that outer edge as possible there is no way to specifically snap to that location unless I put a data point in there's no way to snap but that's pretty darn close and you can see that the bottom um, got a little bit of gap here got a little bit larger gap but when I come over to the right hand side I have a little bit of a gap here and on the upper part just barely enough so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the top and bring the top down just a little bit more so I feel a little bit more comfortable that plotting wise it will show up because right now right on the edge there's a good chance that I may not get that line plotted so to move and so if the title block is does not fit your sheet of paper plotting dotted line because you want to make sure that it's within the dotted line or else it won't print I use a tool called stretch now when you stretch you always select from the right to the left and it creates a green box now notice where the box horizontally cuts the object well that's the spot that it's going to stretch so I'm going to select it right mouse click I'm going to zoom in, pick the end point, and I can stretch it down. Now, right now it says that I'm moving it down 0.0936 at 270 degrees, which remember, 0, 90, 180, I'm moving it in the 270 degree position. Let's say I wanted to move it 0 0.10. Well, I'm 0 0.1003. That's pretty good for just ballparking it, but what if I really wanted to move it exactly a distance? I could type it in. I have to type it in exactly the way that you see it though. I have to type in 0 0.10 less than 270. Now early AutoCAD users would remember using the at symbol to indicate incremental distance. Well we don't have to do that anymore. So we can forego typing in the at and I can type in 0 0.10 less than 270 and hit the enter key. it moved it down one t point one zero one tenth of an inch at the 270 degree notice that it also moved the top down one tenth of an inch because both were selected so the stretch command allows me to stretch vertically or horizontally depending upon where that cutting edge is located so now I've got a title block an A size title block but what if I wanted to make a B size title block the same way well layout number two well, before I get finish this, let's go ahead and rename layout number one. We'll call that A N S I A. Ah, Got to remember my caps lock is on. 